Buongiorno amici, my name is Giovanna and I welcome you to my kitchen on the cliff. Today we have a guest. Our guest is our daughter, Nicoletta Lamarca Sacco, and she is going to assist and do her own recipe. <laughs> Today we're going to make three different kinds of bruschette. We're going to make it with eggplant, we're going to make it with peppers, and we're going to make a delicious olive salad that will go on the third. That's bruschetta, na bruschetta, because the CH in Italian is pronounced like that, bruschetta. Like you say, orchestra. Orchestra, not orchestra. So, we're going to make bruschetta. All right, we're going to begin by toasting our bread. So we're going to take our bread, brush it with the best olive oil you have around. The, the olive oil that you got for your birthday or for Christmas should be the best olive oil. Now we're going to put it in the oven at uh, 400 degrees and watch it, uh, cook it for six to eight minutes. Watch it carefully because we just want it to get a little toasted, lightly toasted. The first topping we're going to make is going to be eggplant. And I am convinced that the very best thing you can do with eggplant is just slice it and fry it and sprinkle it with salt. In Italy, we fry eggplant as is, plain. Now, I was taught to layer it, sprinkle it with salt, and weigh it down to get rid of the juices that are sometimes bitter. Well, most Americans don't salt them and weigh them. You do it whichever way you want. The peel of the eggplant is edible, and particularly if you're frying it without coating it with anything, which makes it more fragile and more delicate, you leave the peel on so that that slice will fry and be whole. It won't fall apart. So we're going to take off the top and we're going to slice off part of the peel so that the first slice... See, this doesn't... And qual è quello che ti serve? Quello, quello vecchissimo. This one? Yeah. Okay. Oldie but goodie right here. This is the best Not one. Not this one. Okay, so I'm, I'm just taking off some of the peel so that the first slice will not be all peel. And we're going to cut slices about a half inch. So these will make very nice slices that will not fall apart. Okay, when you get to this point, I like to do it this way. We're going to fry this eggplant. So we take it to the stove and I'm not going to fry it in olive oil, I'm going to fry it in vegetable oil. Let me explain a little bit about olive oil. I cook with extra virgin olive oil, but if you want, if you have an extraordinary oil such as this, a delicious oil, if you are making a soup, a salad, or a vegetable, you want this at the table because you want to drizzle it on the food just before you eat it. When you heat olive oil, it loses flavor. It doesn't get bad, it's not bad for you, but it loses flavor. So if you want to taste the excellence of an olive oil, you want to drizzle it on your food at the table, right? So. We're going to take the uh, eggplant to the stove. Right, we are going to cover the bottom of this frying pan with canola oil. You can use peanut oil or any neutral oil. I'm heating the oil in the frying pan. As soon as you see the surface shimmering, it's hot enough, and we will place the eggplant slices. You cook with all your senses. You look, you see bubbles, you see steam, you, you check everything. Okay, we're going to put the Right? Sizzle. Don't be eager to turn the eggplant. Let it get golden. How do you know? Well, you check once in a while. See, you look, not yet. Here we are. Beautiful. You turn it. They don't necessarily cook at the same time, so you have to just be watchful. Our first piece of eggplant is beautifully colored. We're going to put it in the container. 
Of course, this can be done ahead. You can do this hours before or even the day before. I've shown you how to cook eggplant and get the most delicious result possible, just plain fried with a sprinkle of salt. Now I'm going to show you the best thing to do with peppers. Here are two beautiful peppers. All right, we're going to roast these directly on the gas flame. We're going to turn the heat on. And here's a situation where you don't have to worry about burning them because that's exactly what you're going to do. When these are charred and black all over, they're done. Not before. Again, you need patience. So you're going to start smelling them and it's going to smell glorious. This is, again, truly one of the best ways of cooking peppers. So, to get some of the nice burn and the nice smell and taste, I do take a piece of my toast from the ordinary oven and burn it. <laughs> well, I'm learning something new. But it's never too late to learn. So, that looks a little more authentic and it's going to taste good too. <laughs> What you look for is burn, you see? That surface has to turn black. So what you are turning black is the skin of the pepper. The pulp will be thick and delicious and soft, and the skin will burn and come right off. This is something that you have to stand by and really check. And the only other thing you're going to need is a paper bag. Here's my paper bag. And as the peppers cook, we will put them in the paper bag to continue to steam and cook through. We're putting them in the paper bag and we're going to close it and wait for the last one. Sì. Ecco, quello è perfetto. Really easy. Non lo fare bruciare. No. Mi piace questo modo di tostare il pane. Eh, questo è il modo che abbiamo a disposizione. Sì, quando si è nella fattoria si fa eh. in un modo, quando sì. si è in casa, in casa si fa in un altro modo. Eh, viene il colore, viene il sapore, viene il pompiere. <laughs> what we're saying is that you use whatever means you have at your disposal. If you were in the farm, you would have a, a wood fire going and you would put the toast on the wood fire. Right. Well, here we have a gas stove, so oh, we use a gas use. stove. The thing is that in Italian you can say, viene il colore, the color, Viene il sapore, the flavor, viene il pompiere, the fireman. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke. Fanno mangia mangia, mangia mi mangia. I just said bread. that the, the bread is so inviting that it's saying to us, eat me, eat me. Yeah. So now this is done. That's charred. And you don't have to worry about what's burning here is a very, that papery skin. You're not burning the actual pepper. All right, now we put it into the paper bag. We close it, we put it here, we put a towel on top, and we let it steam for a half an hour. We finish roasting the peppers. They are happily steaming in the bag. And meanwhile, we're going to prepare. We're going to make a two tomato, two olive, and two herb salad, uh, also known as just an olive salad. So here we have some green colossal stuffed olives with pimentos and here we have some dry cured black olives these i pitted myself they're not often available pitted but it's very very easy to pit them you just squeeze them and the pit comes right out uh, we're going to chop them up so they don't have to be pretty at all they kind of make a little bit of a mess that's the oil but they're very very tasty and they're also very salty so um, you know we add them as a condiment to the whole salad you probably don't even have to add any salt so these are sun-dried tomatoes, just plain, and they're shipped this way um, to save on weight. So they're, they're not heavy, they're not shipped in glass, they're not shipped with oil, and I like them very much because they don't have oil on them. I get to chop them, I can dice them, I can julienne them on my board, and I don't get everything filled with oil. Typically, when they're jarred, they have, they're packed in oil, and then I have to drain them, and they're good for dicing and adding to a hot dish like pasta, but not so good for dicing on a board and adding to a salad because I would much rather use a high quality olive oil like we have here today. 
I also am going to use some fresh tomatoes because the juice is going to enhance the crostini. Crostini have been toasted, so of course they're a little bit crunchy, but I do want to bring a little bit more moisture through the salad to the crostini so that it's not too hard for people's teeth. So I do have two kinds of tomatoes. Moving on to my other ingredients, I have fresh parsley. I describe it as a sunny flavor. The last ingredient uh, for the salad is a beautiful, again, kind of a sunny flavor of basil, which is definitely the taste of summer. I'm going to assist. May I quarter the cherry tomatoes? Come no. Come no means, of course you can. Absolutely. So we're just going to go ahead and julienne basil. And while we're julienning, which means to cut into thin strips, we can pile some of these beautiful um, sun-dried tomatoes right on top of the basil leaves. And then just like that, and what you get is this really nice thin chop. It's very pretty, it looks nice, and it's easy to eat with the toasted bread or the bruschetta. So here's our parsley. We're just gonna give it a chop. It doesn't have to be precise at all. I don't get too crazy with stems either. The stems are tasty and they go into this dish. Um, it's not gonna be a problem. Stem is definitely edible. So for the olive salad proportions, um, I had a pint of cherry tomatoes and we used half of it. So that's approximately one cup of cherry tomatoes. Depends on your tolerance and taste for salt. About a quarter to a half cup of the pitted black olives chopped, a quarter to a half cup of the green olives chopped as well. And I know my mom has mentioned this many times, quanto basta is to your taste or how much is enough for you or for the recipe of the herb. And that means a good handful of the parsley, uh, a good handful of the basil according to what you wish. <laughs> Vogliamo aggiungere le olive? Sì. Quindi io taglio quelle nere e tu potresti tagliare quelle verdi. Va bene. So we're going to add our olives. So this bruschetta topping is very forgiving. It doesn't have to look super duper um, perfect as far as how the ingredients are chopped because once they combine, it almost really looks like a jewel tone uh, topping for the toast. So we're at the final stage. This is our olive salad for our bruschetta topping. So we're gonna give it a little pinch of oregano and a little bit of pepper. I'm just gonna taste it for salt just to make sure. That make cocaine. Per me ci metterei un tantino di sale. Solo un tantino. No. Un tantino. Va bene. Okay, so a pinch of salt is needed. Just a pinch. And olive oil. And this is actually better if it sits as a salad and then is used as a topping for the bruschetta. So that's what we're going to do. And now we go ahead and put it in our serving bowl so it looks pretty. And you can see the jewel colors between the pimentos that have fallen out of the green olives to the beautiful green herbs and these colorful cherry tomatoes, which really make it pop. Of course, if you wish, you can quarter some marinated artichokes and add them to the olive salad as well. Now we'll move on to assembling our bruschette for today. Right, we're ready to peel our peppers. What I do is I tear the paper bag and drop the skins right in the paper bag. Okay, there we go. You see how easy it is? That's the, uh, the very thin outer skin, right? I'm going to simply cut them in strips. Little bits of black will remain and it's fine. They just taste the char. The toppings are all made. The olive salad is marinating. The pepper, on the other hand, we're going to marinate also like the olive salad. So I'm taking a clove of garlic. I am slicing it vertically and then the other way and we're going to very pretty fine one clove is enough this is uh, traditional and delicious by the way it's traditional because it's very good okay so one clove of garlic okay we're going to put a sprinkle of salt and a good drizzle of this lovely extra virgin olive oil 
This is how you get the full flavor of that special oil, because it hasn't been heated. Right, the peppers will also marinate. Okay. okay, we're ready to assemble. Here's the bruschetta. First, we'll do eggplant. We're going to put a lovely thick slice of eggplant. We're going to sprinkle a little salt, and we're going to decorate it with a sprig of mint. Oh, you know what? Let's get the olives back. Because an olive would be nice here. I usually chop up the mint to bring the scent to the, to the palate and to the nose, and I'll get a little bit of salt. The last step is to cut the bruschetta, so you can hear this. <laughs> That's a nice sound. So this has been marinating and it smells really good. I can smell the olives, they smell acid, and then I have the fresh parsley and the fragrant basil, which is almost floral. That's crunchy. Now you know how to make bruschetta in uh, three different flavors. As you could see, you could decorate these any way you like. It's, it's uh, fun to do to just place the uh, vegetables in such a way that it's a decorative pattern. <laughs> it's a great snack. So uh, Papa, Howard, as you know, is going to take two of them. He's going to have a, a try of the confetti colored olive salad and the basically Italian flag. That's very pretty. Here you are. I'll have one. Okay, so Nonna's going to try the olive salad. If you've enjoyed Bruschetta and the rest of this video, don't forget to like it and please subscribe. <laughs> well, someone's enjoying it. This is finger food, you know. I don't think you could get a fork through it. So you, you eat it at your own peril. <laughs> <laughs> it's not for a first date. It's a little messy. <laughs> well. Nice for a picnic, right? Is it good? Mm -hmm. He likes it. <laughs> Beyond good. It's too delicious for words. I really have to say that. It's very, very good. It is so good. <laughs> and really easy to do. This is a, a summer dish par excellence. Make it and make it often. <laughs> you will love it. <laughs> I need an apple. Nice right now, and we don't Colorful. need it all over the tablecloth either. Colorful. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy your bruschetta. And don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Do not forget <laughs> to subscribe. <laughs>